Welcome back. My name is Mary Van Dyke, owner of Finding Grandpa, and this series is called Building the Bridge Back to Ireland. Using various websites to find documents that might show where in Ireland your ancestors are from and where to look once you get across the pond. This is part two of a nine-part series describing cluster genealogy and hopefully showing you why it's important. Before we begin, all the websites listed here are examples only. They do not represent the full range of options at your fingertips. They are uh, websites that I use often. I flip-flop back and forth between them, and I just want you to know there are more options on the Internet. Be aware that some of the websites I say are free, might change in the future, and may have fees attached. And I don't want to confuse you because I will use various surnames in the examples on the slideshows. I might show you a McDonald in one slide and immediately change to a Kelly. Cluster genealogy is simply tracking whole families through time, not focusing just on your direct line. If you do that, you're going to be putting blinders on. You've got to track all the siblings of your direct line, including the siblings' children and grandchildren, you're going to find much more information than if you stuck with just your direct line. Peter Sweeney, uh, this is his death record of 1896. He is my great-great-grandfather. This is the only document I have that shows his age, and I think his age is five years younger. I think it's wrong in this record, but this is the only document I have that shows his age, and I have nothing that shows where he was born or who his parents were, so I'm going to track one of his brothers, John. Now John married Mary McCullough. He loved her so much he converted from Catholicism to the Church of Ireland. Because he did that, the family ostracized him. However, because of that, he is now considered non-Catholic, and non-Catholic marriages were recorded in the civil registration starting in 1845. This is John's marriage record that my cousin Mary from Dublin found. John is a carpenter. His two brothers, Thomas and Peter, are carpenters who live in Loch Ray. And John's father is John, who is a carpenter. I was able to find most of the children in the IGI records, the International Genealogical indexes on family search. They're now called the Ireland births and baptisms and I found I believe five kids and I found a couple of the uh, marriage names later and I found a couple of the kids in the 1901 census with John and Mary. I cannot find John and Mary in 1911 in the census. I don't know if they moved. I think they died. I think they died between 1901 and 1911 in Woodlawn, but I can't find any of the other kids in Woodlawn in 1911. And I don't know who any of the kids married except for Elizabeth. I found an IGI record for her saying she married Percy Pierce in 1907 in New York City. So I'm thinking, okay, Elizabeth came over to America, she married Percy. Now since I'm doing cluster genealogy and I'm a census-holic, I've got to track Elizabeth in the 1910 census, right after they got married. Both of them are working the night of the census at the Manhattan State Hospital in New York City. Elizabeth is a nurse, it says here she's been married for three years, and she's the mother of one child. So I'm thinking, wait a minute, mom and dad are at the hospital that night. Who's watching the baby? Who's got the baby the night of the census? I couldn't find her anywhere. I can't find any Pierce baby in Manhattan that makes logical sense, but I did find the family living to, at home that night of the 1920 census. Elizabeth and Percy are there with their daughter, 12-year-old Consuela. So doing cluster genealogy again, I have to dot my I's. I'm going back and I'm going to try to find Consuela in the 1910 census. She's living with her grandmother, widow Mary Sweeney, and her two aunts, Mary Jane Armitage, who's also a widow, and Ellen Sweeney. Now, the top five people of this census, notice on the far right, all came over in 1903. So I'm thinking, okay, John died in 19, between 1901 census of Ireland in Woodlawn and 1903 when Mary arrived. 
So I'm searching for Mary Sweeney in the Ship Manifest of 1903 because I don't know if she came over in January 1903 or December 1903. And that's pertinent when I'm going back to look for John's death record. If Mary came over after he passed away, I want to narrow down the time frame of when John might have passed away, maybe in Woodlawn. So I'm search hard for Mary Sweeney, and I can't find any Mary Sweeney. So then I started looking for Mary Jane Armitage. I can't find any record of her. I started looking for Alexander. Again, I can't find Alexander. But I did find Robert and William. They're listed at the top of the page of the 1903 ship manifest. Here's Robert, and there's William. Now this upper image is the left half of the page and the lower image is the right half of the page. I couldn't get it all on the screen so I split it like this. And it says Robert and William Armitage are from Woodlawn so I know I got the right boys. They're going uh, to their uncle William Armitage in New York and uncle paid for their passage. But the note over here on the side says they're with mother and grandfather. So I'm thinking wait a minute there's more information here. These two boys didn't travel alone. So the next page of the census, I beg your pardon, the next page of the ship manifest, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking the names are missing. The page is torn. The last 10 or 12 people are missing. The page is torn roughly across this line. So everything you see to the lower left of this red line is actually from the image underneath this page. It's from the previous page. So since I can't find the Sweeney's, I'm never going to find the Sweeney's. Nobody will ever find these people because the page is ripped. But the last four people on the page are from Woodlawn. Again, the upper image is the left half of the page. I have a 57-year-old female, a 56-year-old male, 35-year-old female, and it looks like a 10-year-old female, but I think that's a male. I think that's Alexander. They're all from Woodlawn, and they're going to New York. The older couple are going to their son, William Sweeney, on 48th Street. The next woman is going to the brother, and the child is going to Uncle William Sweeney. So I've got the family. John Sweeney is in New York City in 1903. So I try to hunt for him and Ma William and Mary Jane in the 1905 census and I found them all living together. If John is alive in 1905 but he's gone by 1910, I know that he's now, I beg your pardon, John passed away in this five-year-old range. So I went to the Italian Genealogical Group's website, italiangen.org, and I searched the death database over here on the left, deaths, clicked the center tab, searched the death database, and asked it to show me all the John Sweeney's that died in Manhattan between 1905 and 1910. I thought there would be 50 or 100 names, but there's only 18. Three men are over 50. One of them, the 71-year-old at the bottom, down here, I actually found his obituary and he is not my man. But the other two men are possibilities. They're a little too young, but they're the next possibility. And because there's only two, I went ahead and ordered their certificates because I've got a certificate number and an exact death date. I went to FamilySearch.org, clicked the Search tab, this is the main page that shows up. So I clicked the catalog tab in the upper left and I searched places for New York City. Under that category, this shows you all the collections that are in Utah at the LDS Big Library. I scrolled way down to the bottom and I selected the United States Vital New York City Vital Records. There's 36 items in that collection. When I scrolled down, I found the Manhattan death certificates are listed between 1866 and 1919. This is not just an index. This is the actual death certificates as well as the index for 1868 and 1890. When I click that item, I get a description of what this is as well as all the different films. When I scroll down to the bottom, 
and I mean scrolled way down because each year has multiple films. I found the correct date range for one of the John Sweeney's uh, between November 13, 1907 and November 28, 1907. When I clicked the film number on the far right, I ordered the film. It was current rate is $7.50. It came in in a couple of weeks and I have the option to view it for three months at the local uh, Family Stakes Family History Library. It came in. I have John's death record. Here's my John that I just traced in New York. He's a carpenter. It says he's been in New York for five years, but I know it's really only three. His father is a John, and his mother is Mary Fitzmorris. Now, back in 1993, my parents went to Loch Ray, sat down at the table, and Mom's cousin Maureen let my dad copy this image. This is a family tree that Maud showed at the bottom in the box, uh, is my great-grandmother's sister. She gave it to her nephew Dermot Sweeney in the 1960s or 70s. She wrote this up. This is her father Peter and her aunts and uncles. The John on the far right is the John I just tracked in New York. These are her grandparents. It says John Sweeney. First wife is a Fitzmorris. Second wife is unknown. Now if my John is the baby of the family and Mary Fitzmorris is his mother according to his death record and Mary is the first wife we can now logically say that Mary is the mother of all the other children including my direct line Peter. If it wasn't for Maud and her information showing that the first wife was Mary Fitzmorris we never would have been able to determine which child was the Fitzmorris woman's children and which child or children belonged to the second wife. If I never tracked Consuela and Robert, the grandchildren of a sibling on my direct line, I never would have found that record. Nobody would have ever found that record. Cluster genealogy is important. Families stick together. You need to look for the children and grandchildren on the siblings of your direct line. Please join us in the third series, the next series. It is a video on American records and what can be found in American records and what types of records to look for. Thank you for watching.